Hello, in this session we focus on center of mass. This question says the diagram shows a uniform density lamina A, B, C, D, E made up of a square of side 2A and an equilateral triangle of side 2A. Show that the distance of the centroid of the lamina from BD is 3A into 4 minus root 3 all over 13. The lamina is freely suspended at E so that it rests in equilibrium with ED inclined at an angle theta to the vertical. Show that tan theta equals 14 minus 3 root 3 all over 13. This is a past GC equation. To begin, we have to make the analysis on the diagram. The first thing is that the centroid of this lamina is along the line of symmetry along this line that divides the lamina into two equal parts the central lies somewhere along there we are being asked to calculate the distance from that centroid if we denote it to be arbitrarily here that is g the centroid the distance from there to bd bd is the axis specified in the equation then it is the distance x bar that we are looking for in order to calculate this distance i will need to make use of moments moment here has to do with force times perpendicular distance and the force is nothing but the weight of the individual or component lamina that make up the whole lamina the component lamina are the triangle and the square so i need to know their widths before I can do the calculation. Each of the components, the triangle and the square, have their weights concentrated at their centroids. That of the triangle will be somewhere here, and is said to be two-third the way from the vertex along this median, while that of the square is in the middle of the square itself, somewhere here. So I need these distances and then the widths of the component parts as well as that of the whole lamina. In order to get the widths, uh, I'm supposed to use mg, but the masses have not been given. So once the masses are not given in an equation like this, we then rely on the fact that, remember again, the equation has specified that the lamina is of uniform density. That implies that the weight of the lamina is uniformly distributed over the area. And so we can define the weight per unit area of lamina so that it can help us to get the weight of each portion of the lamina so let that weight per unit area be lambda i will then need the area of each of the portions and for that of the square remember the square is said to be of side 2A. The triangle is of side 2A being equilateral. So we have that the triangle BCD, we need the height, which will also help us in getting the centroid of the triangle. That height, I can find it by using the smaller triangle here, whose height or whose base rather is supposed to be half of BD because it's on the line of symmetry. So BD being 2A, this other one should be small, this other one should be A. And the height of the triangle then should be H, so that by Pythagoras theorem, H squared plus A squared equals 4A squared, the square of this hypotenuse. And so h would be the root of 4a squared minus a squared, which is 3a squared, giving us root 3a. So the area of the triangle, which is half the base, the base is 2a times the height, root 3a, which should be root 3a squared. We need that area. In order to track everything, I would use a table 
in which I have the portion of the lamina, the width of that portion, and the distance of the centroid of the portion. from my axis which is BD in this case. There are two parts of the lamina. We have the square and then the triangle. For the square, the weight of the square is simply the area of the square times weight per unit area. And the area of the square is 2A times 2A which is 4A squared times lambda the weight per unit area of the lamina gives the weight of the square. For the triangle, the weight again is simply the area of the triangle times the weight per unit area of lamina. That would be root 3 A squared lambda. Then we consider now the whole lamina And the weight of the whole lamina is simply the sum of the weights of the component parts of the lamina, which should then be 4a squared lambda, 4a squared lambda plus root 3a squared lambda, which gives 4 plus root 3a squared lambda. The most crucial part in filling this table is at the level of the distances of the centroid from the specified axis. In this case, we have that the axis under consideration is vertical. So it is like the y-axis, while the line of symmetry is like the x-axis. And so the distances of the centroids are on two opposite sides of the axis. So there is the need that some distances to one side are positive and others are negative. Conventionally, we can take left as negative and right as positive or vice versa. It's simply a matter of choice. If I consider left to be positive, then I will have that the distance of the centroid of the square from the axis under consideration. Remember the center of gravity of the square is at this point which is the middle of the square itself and from here to here the side of the square is 2a so from the middle to bd the axis should be half of 2a which is a and it's positive because i've considered the left as positive in this case the triangle the centroid of a triangle generally lies along any median to third the way from the from the vertex. So from the vertex C, the centroid is along this median, which is the height of the triangle, to third of H. But my distance of interest is instead from the centroid of the triangle to BD where my axis is. So if two third is this way, then one third should be this way. So one third H would be the distance of the centroid from BD. And since my right is negative in this case and my left is positive, I have that that distance should be negative one third the height and the height was calculated as root three a. Then the distance of the centroid of the whole lamina which we are seeking to find being x bar is to the left of the axis which I've considered to be positive and so that distance will be x bar. Once the table is complete, I can now take moments about the axis under consideration, which in this case is BD. If we take moments about BD, we have it that the sum of moments of the component parts of the lamina should be equal to the moment of the whole lamina about the same axis. And so the moment of the triangle plus the moment of the square about BD should be equal to the moment of the whole lamina about BD. And so we'll be talking of the moment of the square being the weight times the distance from the axis 
plus the moment of the triangle which is the width times the distance from the axis equals the moment of the whole lamina which is the width times the distance from the axis so once the diagram is there everything goes smoothly so width times distance for the square i have 4a squared lambda into a plus weight times distance for the triangle which is root 3 a squared lambda into the distance which is negative 1 over 3 root 3 a should be equal to weight times distance for the whole lamina 4 plus root 3 a squared lambda x bar a squared lambda is common in every term so I strike it off and I'm left with 4a root 3 times root 3 gives 3 which cancels this other 3 and I'm just left with negative a equals 4 plus root 3 x bar therefore x bar equals 4a minus a is 3a all over 4 plus root 3 which will be equal to i rationalize the denominator that will be 3a into the conjugate of the denominator which is 4 minus root 3 all over 4 plus root 3 into 4 minus root 3 therefore x bar equals 3a into 4 minus root 3 all over this is simply difference of two squares 4 squared is 16 and root 3 squared is 3 so we have 4 times 4 which is 16 minus root 3 times root 3 which is 3 and so we have that 16 minus 3 which is 13 as required we were asked to prove that the distance of the centroid of the lamina from bd is 3a into 4 minus root 3 all over 13. the next part says the lamina is freely suspended at e so that it rests in equilibrium with ed inclined at an angle theta to the vertical show that tan theta equals 14 minus 3 root 3 all over 13. in the case of a suspended lamina you do not necessarily need to draw an inclined lamina the fact is that when you suspend a lamina at any of its vertices it will swing and at one point it will settle and equilibrium will be attained only when g the centroid of the lamina is vertically below the point of suspension so the vertical that the question is referring to is simply this line in real sense the line from the point of suspension to your centroid so once that question is asked you do not need to redraw a suspended lamina because it will waste time especially during the exam simply go to the diagram and indicate where the centroid is arbitrarily if you want and then draw a line joining the point of suspension to that g the centroid from there you indicate a perpendicular to the side where they want the angle to make with the vertical that side in this question is ed so the angle they are referring to as theta is this one in order to have the tangent of the angle as the question asks us to prove we would need to determine these sides this is a perpendicular from the centroid to the side where I want to determine the angle which it makes with the vertical. So this side, I can call it Y bar, but I know that it is equal to A because the line of symmetry being here, from here to here, BD is 2A. So from midway to the line ED should just be A. Now this distance here is X bar and the whole of ed is 2a so the distance from e to where this point is 
should be 2a minus x bar, which is the adjacent of the triangle that I'm seeking to find the tangent of that angle inside. And so I can already say that tan theta, which is supposed to be the opposite side, being a all over the adjacent, which is 2a minus x bar. And this is x bar that I'm just from proving up. So I'll then use it to have a all over 2a minus 3a into 4 minus root 3 all over 13. This will be a all over the LCM down will give 26a minus 3a into 4 minus root 3 all over 13. This gives, when I simplify, 13 will spring up and I'll have 13a all over 26a minus 3a times 4, which is 12a. So 26a minus 12a gives 14a. And then negative 3a times negative root 3 gives positive 3 root 3a, which should be 13a all over 14 plus 3 root 3 all a the a's would cancel and i need to rationalize the denominator to have 13 into 14 minus 3 root 3 all over 14 plus 3 root 3 into the conjugate which is 14 minus 3 root 3 This gives 13 into 14 minus 3 root 3 all over. This again is difference of 2 squares, so it's just 14 squared minus 3 root 3 all squared. 14 squared is 196 minus root 3. 3 root 3 squared is 27. Um, that gives 13 into 14 minus 3 root 3 all over 196 minus 27 should give 169 13 would cancel to give 13 therefore tan theta equals 14 minus 3 root 3 all over 13 as required.